Welcome back aliens, my name is Devin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about the practical implementation of linear search and binary search to understand the time complexity which we can represent with the help of big O notation. Now basically we'll write two examples here. In fact, we will also do binary search in two ways just to understand how thing works and then how will you find the amount of time it takes, not in seconds of course, but the number of steps, right? So we have discussed about big O notation, which is the big O of one, big O of N, big O of log N, right? But we also have multiple options, but then at this point, let's focus only on two with the help of two algorithms. Linear search, which is big O of N, and binary search, which is big O of log N. Okay, so what I will do is I will write this code in Java. And of course, we'll not be doing very complex stuff in Java. If you know any other language, you can follow this. So I'm using an IDE and again, you can use any IDE. I'm using IntelliJ IDEA. So in this, I have a project. I will simply create a file here and we'll name this file as demo. So we got a file called demo.java and this is where basically we'll also have our main method. So if you are coming from different languages, you know, we also have main there. So we have a main. Now let's start with the actual work. Imagine this as a, just a template for to run the code. We'll write our code here. Now what we want to achieve. Now basically we will be having a list of elements and we want to search a element out of it. Okay. Now the size can be anything. It can be five. It can be 10. It can be 20, 100. Doesn't matter. Initially we'll go for less number of values. And then we'll also see how do you work with thousands of values and how do you find element and then how much steps it takes to search a particular element there. So what I will do is, first of all, I will create a simple array here and we'll say this array name as nums. So let's say we got an array and then I will also specify the initial values to it. And since we are going for a sorted array, of course, when you talk about the linear search, we don't have to specify a sorted array. It can be applicable on any kind of array. But when it comes to the binary search, you need to pass a sorted element array or the least you can say. So here, I will simply assign some values. Let's say we got five values here. And then I'm, I just want to keep it simple with those values. Of course, you can have any value, doesn't matter. I'm just trying to keep it simple. Or maybe if you want, I can say seven, nine, 11, 13. That's my love for odd numbers. Okay, and I want to search a value. So whatever value I want to search, we can also specify here. Now we can use any variable name, but we have already used target as a variable, right? When we were discussing the theory. So we'll say target equal to, and we'll mention the target. Let's say I want to search a element, which is 11. Okay. So this is what I want to search from this particular list. We can do this with multiple algorithms. We can use linear search, binary search, or whatever you think about, but let's go for linear search initially. And then we'll look at the binary search. Now, how do we do that? So what we can do is we can say, I want to get the result. Okay. Uh, I want to find this 11 in this list and give me the index number. I don't want anything else, just the index number where it belongs to. Okay. So who will give me that? So what I can do is I can assign this star to someone else. Let's say linear search. Now this is another method which will give the value to us. So I don't want to populate everything in this particular main. Main will simply say, Hey, you know, I got these two things. I got the list. I got the target value. You tell me which index this value belongs to, or if you don't have this value in the list, also let me know. So linear search will say, okay, um, accepted the challenge. It will accept two things. First nums and target. Why you have to pass nums? Of course, linear search will say, I will search, but tell me where to search. And target will say, this is a value you want to search. Now the thing is we don't have this method yet. So what I will do is I will just use my IDE to generate. Okay. So I will say more actions create this method and you can see we got this method. I don't want this to be private. I want this to be public and that's it. What you're doing is you are calling another method at this point, since we are returning a value, what we can say, we can say return minus one. Okay. Nothing fancy. I just want this to work and that's why I'm returning minus one. Okay. And what if you get the result? Of course, uh, if there's no, if, if this value is not there in the list, it will return minus one. Otherwise we can return the index value. So whatever value you get, you can simply print here and you can say element found at index and then you can specify the index value here. So let me just give a space so you can specify the result here. So whatever index is there. Okay. And let's run this code just to see. I just want to make sure that everything is working. Let me just run this code and you can see we got the answer. And also I want to move this to right hand side. 
Okay, so it, it looks good. So you can see the output says element found at index mi minus one. That's weird. It's just that we are returning minus one. That's what is printing minus one. What we should be doing is we should be checking if the result is not equal to one or not equal to minus one. So this statement, it, it should print only when the result is mi not minus one. In case it is minus one, that means the element was not there. So I can simply print element not found. Okay. And now if you run this code, it will print element not found because we are not even searching, right? But we'll search now. So how do you search? It's very simple. So what you can do is you can use a simple loop here. Okay, nothing fancy, again, a simple loop. And in this, you're going to iterate. So we have seen the linear search, right? So if you remember the theory, we have talked about this. Uh, so basically we'll search from the first element, right? So we are going to start from five and then we'll look for, is it matching, is it matching, is it matching? Of course the values are different, but we'll basically search for each element. In the same way, in linear search, if you want to move, you have to use a loop. So it will start from zero and will go till the nums of length. So basically if you, if the value, number of values you have five, you have to reach four. Okay, so that's why we have saying less than, and then I plus plus. Now that's your for loop, right? So in this for loop, you don't have to do much. You simply have to check. So whatever element you got, the recent, the current element which you're focusing on. So in the list, we have five values. If you're focusing on five, we'll check if five, which is the first element, is it matching with the target? If it is matching with the target, our job is done. We can simply return the index, the current index. So let's say if you're searching for five, and then you got five, return zero. You, you, your job is done. That's what you're doing here. Okay, and that's it. Okay, it should work. That's what we're expecting. Linear search is so simple. If you run this code, it says the element found at index three. That's right. So this is zero, one, two, three. And our job is done. Okay, uh, what if you're searching for, let's say five in this case, it will print at index zero. And that's what we got. So this is working. But what if you're searching for something, let's say 77, which is not there, there in the list, if you run this code, it will say element not found. So linear search is working, right? Now we can do the same thing with the help of binary search. Now let's see how binary search works. So what I will do is I will just write a code here, which is public. In fact, I will just copy paste the code, not a copy pasting, but reusing the code. I can simply copy this code and paste it here. Now, if you're coming from Java and if you're getting confused why I'm getting a static method, why not non-static methods? It's because I don't want to deal with objects here. Okay, I just want to keep it simple. So we got a static method and a binary search. The thing is only method name will change. The parameter will remain same. In binary search also you pass a list and you pass a target. The algorithm will change. Of course it will return minus one. That's not, that is not something which is changing. But what we will do inside this. Now, if you go to the board here, what we have done is if you have a list of values, if you can see we have a list of values here. Now, initially you have to specify the starting point and then you have to specify the ending point as well, right? So starting and ending you have to specify. In this example, we'll say left and right, okay? Because that's how we, that makes much more sense, right? Left and right, starting point is left, ending point is right. And then you will find a mid. Every time you find a mid, if it is matching, that's great. Otherwise you have to uh, basically skip the number of elements, which is in, in the other section, okay? So how do we do that here? So what I can simply do here is, in fact, I will just, for my reference, I will also have those values here. So I will say five, seven, nine, 11, and 13. Okay, and the value, let's say, which I'm searching for, this time let's have the value. So let's say I'm searching for 11, okay? So what I will do is, if you, when you're searching for 11, first of all, you have to specify the starting point. So I will say left, in fact, left int left is equal to, now left is a starting point, right, which is zero. Then int right, which is the ending point, which could be four, but then why to hard code it? What you can do is you can say nums dot length minus one because nums dot length will give you five. You have to say minus one, which will give you four. So now we got the starting point, ending point, and then our journey begins, right? So what are we going to do here? So we'll use a while loop here. Now inside this while loop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if my left is less than equal to right we'll check if left is less than right because that's what we want right left should be on the left hand side which is the which is the smaller values and then here what we'll do is we'll find the mid okay that's the journey we are going to start so mid is basically your starting point right which is left plus right and we want this to be in the bracket so that we can divide so left plus right divided by two okay that's how you find the mid right 
Now, once you got your mid, you can basically check if the nums of mid, is it matching with target? If it is matching, that's great. We can simply return the index, which is mid. Of course, right, mid is represent, representing an index here. If it is not matching, then we have to change the value of left or right, depend upon what you got in the mid. So what we'll do is we'll say if, else if. Now, how do you check? So we can check if nums of mid is less than the target. So let me take this up as well. Yeah, so if nums of mid is less than the target. So let's say uh, when you talk about this elements and then we are searching for 11, right? The mid which we got is nine. If the nine is less than the 11, we have to shift our left, right? So this left, which was representing five, will shift here now. I mean, not even nine. We don't have to even consider nine, right? So what we can do is we can say left will shift to mid plus one. Okay, so basically now we have two values, 11 and 13, which we are going to focus in the next iteration. But what if you are searching for something else, which is on in this side? Let's say we were searching for seven. In this case, we have to shift our right. So right is mid minus one. So basically, let's say if you're searching for seven here, you got a mid as nine. What you will do is you will say, okay, so the value is less than the mid. So we have to, sh we have to skip this two. The focus will be only on five and seven. That's what we have done here. If you're searching for seven, okay? I think uh, this looks cool. We Our job is done. Let's verify if things are working out. The only thing that we do is, instead of searching for a linear search this time, we'll go for a binary search. Let's run. It works. You can see it says found index at three. And what if you are searching for, let's say 17, which is not there. Run, it says not found. Let's search for five and it says it works. You can say index zero. So that means you can use linear search or binary search both works. But what if you want to really see how many steps it is getting? So what I will do is, let me just say this is result two, which is binary search. And let me also say result one. Of course, I'm not going to use both the things. I'm just, I just want to call both the methods, okay? I'm just going to use result one because if Linear search is able to find it. Binary search will also be able to find it. Okay, let's print result one here. So I just want to call both the methods. That's the reason I'm, I'm using result two, but result two, we are not using it anywhere else. Okay, so let's do this with both the algorithms and you can see both will print the same thing. Oh, we are not printing the second part. Okay, doesn't matter. Both will give the same result. But what I'm really concerned about is the number of steps. So what I'm going to do here is, let's calculate the number of steps it takes. So I will say for linear search, steps is equal to zero initially. And every time the loop iterates, okay, I will simply say steps, number of steps taken. So steps plus plus, and then I'm going to print just, so just before return, I'm going to print steps taken by linear colon, and I will print steps. The same thing I want to print here as well. What if there's no element found? So this will not never be executed, right? Okay, we have to put this into a curly brackets. Cool. So we are printing the steps here. The same thing I think we should do for bunny search as well. So here I will say int steps is equal to zero. And every time you iterate in this loop, you will say steps plus plus. And then basically here, you will print the same statement. So I will just copy this. So we'll print before returning the value but here we'll say binary. And we also print this before returning just to cover all the cases. Okay, let's see what it does. Run this code and you can see for five elements, linear search is searching in one. Okay, reason being, we are searching for five, right? I think we are searching for five. Let's search for 11, okay? In some cases, linear search works well. Run and you can see the linear search takes four steps. The binary search takes two steps. That's crazy. Run again, of course you will get the same output. But what if the values are higher? Let's say I have more values here. Let me add 10, let me add one, two, three. So now we have more values, right? I don't know how many values we have, but let's say if I run this code, the linear search takes eight steps, binary search takes three steps, okay? But what if you have thousand values? Now, how do you check thousand values? Now that will be tricky. So what I'm going to do is, let's add some random values here. Let me create a array of size 1000. I don't want to specify my own values. Let's say 1000. And the value which I'm searching for is let's say 500. Okay, it's somewhere between, or maybe I will say 900. Let's see what happens. 
So I have a value which is one to thousand. I'm searching for. I mean, I have thousand values in the array, and I'm searching for nine hundred. But by default, the value will be zero. Okay. Uh, example: If you search this, it will say not found. But look at the number of steps. Linear search takes thousand. Binary takes ten. And what if you have more values here? Run linear search takes ten thousand. Binary takes four. And look at the size. Example: Let's say if the size is eight, and by default all the values in the array is zero. So anyway, it is sorted by default. And you can see if I run this code, uh, it says eight for linear, four for binary. But the moment I double the values. Look at the steps taken by binary is only one extra linear all is double. If I double the value again, thirty two. So every time you double the value, binary search will take only one extra step, and that's why we say it's a big notation for this is log n. Okay. So in this case, the binary search works better than the linear search. Now the same code you can write with the help of binary search as well. Example: instead of using a loop here. I can simply comment the entire section, and we can replace this with a, a recursive function. The only thing is in recursive that the changes we will be doing is in recursive you are going to call the same function again and again by changing the values. Let's say you have this big uh, array, and then you are done your first search. You find you found the mid. Now the moment you found this, this section, let's say this part or this part, whichever is matching, you will remove the other half, and again you will run the same binary search. On this list, and then again you will break it down into two parts. You will remove one, and you will run the binary search on on the other one. So in binary search, basically, if you want to make it recursive, you have to pass two more things, which is int left and okay, not int left. You have to specify the left and right. So I will say zero and nums dot length minus one. So basically, you have to specify the start and the end, and every time you call binary. You will simply accept those two things. You you will say left and right, so that you don't have to specify them here. In fact, you know, instead of removing it, maybe you want to refer this later. I'll just come in this section. Now, since this is a recursive, you don't need a loop here, right? What you can do is you can check if the same step left is less than equal to right. If this is a scenario, what you will do is, of course, you have to find the mid. I will just copy this code. This is where you are finding mid. And after finding the mid, you can basically also uh, check the same logic. This is a logic you are going to use. The changes is we are we are going to change in the else part. I mean the if else part. Let me uncomment the entire section. The changes you are going to do. Let let's not print the steps. Now we know the steps, right? How many steps it takes. But I'm just trying to convert that into a recursive function. So it will you will return mid here. There's no problem with this. The changes happens in the else if. So in the else if instead of Doing this, we are going to basically call the binary search once again by passing the same nums, and then you will change the target value now. So you will pass target value. So you have to pass nums and target value. Then you have to pass the left value. Now what is left? So in this case, we have to change the left. Right, left will become mid plus one, and right will remain same. Right will remain right. But here again, we have to make the changes. Else part instead of this, left will remain left, and right becomes mid. Minus one. So basically, what you're doing is you are changing the values like this. If you have this list of values, you break it down into two parts again after checking, and then you're changing. You're again calling the same binary search with the new values. Okay, that's what we are doing here. So let me remove the extra curly brackets just to make the code look good or short, basically. And that's it. This is your binary search. Let's see if this works. Let's rest restart. I mean, rerun. And it says not found because yeah, of course it's not found because we don't have that value. But yeah, this is a code for the uh, binary search with the help of recursive. Now there's one more thing. Uh, you can try with different examples. What you can do is you can take a array of thousand values and add random values. So in Java we have this random class. You can add the values and see how much time it takes. So yeah, that's it from this. So we understood the big O notation for linear and binary search. And if you have any more questions, let me know in the comment section. And do subscribe for further videos. Bye bye.